So, preparation, 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 preparation. Um, here I've prepared the area that I'm going to laminate. Um, so there's going to be a carbon double bias taping. It goes from the beam to the hull. You can see I've prepared by marking out my overlap staggers. So these are the different uh, layers that will come down. One will stop here, then the second one will stop here, and the third one stop here. So that I have a tapering of my laminate. I will actually be sticking the tacky tape to this green masking tape. Uh, the reason being is that the grey tacky tape I have is a bit of a pain in the backside to clean off the off the job. Um, so by sticking the tacky tape to my green masking tape, it saves me a little bit of a chore uh, down the track. going to um, go through the vacuum uh, bagging consumable stack. So the first things that will go down are the carbon double bias and that will be holding our uh, main beam to our hull. So that's the first thing that will get laminated in with resin, sticky stuff, cut to the right shape, overlaps, tapers and all that sort of thing done first. Then the first layer of the stack which is consumable. So this will actually be removed from the composite stack. So the carbon gets laminated to the boat, stays with the boat, makes the boat strong. Peel ply is the first layer in. This does not stay um, with the boat. This comes off. The reason why we use this, this stuff um, primarily gives us a surface finish. <laughs> um, a surface finish which we can work with. It gives a nice textured resin rich surface that we can sand. Um, we can sand that surface which then aids in secondary bonding. When we sand this, we sand this resin rich um, top surface without sanding into the carbon itself too much and removing all the strong carbon fibers. So that's the first layer in our consumables. Next in the consumable stack um, is, in this case, it's the red looking thing. This is a perforated plastic. This is a um, very thin plastic with tiny, tiny perforations in it. Let's see if the camera can focus up. Oh, yeah, there you go. So you can see little holes in the plastic here. And what this does is when we pull the vacuum, this gets pushed against the, um, the carbon and the peel ply and it squashes it down and it allows the excess resin because when we laminate, we um, generally put a little bit more resin in to start with to make sure it's all nicely wet out. When we clamp it down with the atmosphere, it squeezes a little bit of resin out and that resin has to go somewhere so it goes through these little holes and into the breather felt. So the next one is the breather felt in the consumable stack. For the job I'm doing I've actually pre-stuck the um, perforated plastic to my breather felt. It makes the job a lot easier in the instance that I'm working with. Um, you don't always do it. Breather felt comes in many, many different shapes, sizes, textures, <laughs> and all the rest. Um, the weapon of choice for us at the moment is a text geo textile, and you can get it from um, the local hardware. And it's a matting that's used to uh, for earthworks and gardening and things like that. All right, next, the final part of the vacuum stack is the vacuum bag itself. Um, and the vacuum bag itself is basically an airtight plastic membrane, no holes, <laughs> and as tough as possible. 
the vacuum bag can be made of anything strong enough to do or withstand a vacuum uh, in the environment you're working in. Here is a nylon um, vacuum bag on the roll. This is tube stuff. This is uh, designed for high temperature, will get hot and not fail. Final piece of the puzzle, sealing your bag. The preferred option is a material we call tacky tape. It is a little tape. We have a gray one here. This is specially used for uh, low temperature um, wet lamb situations. It's quite a soft and very sticky um, tape. Last but not least, the frog's tongue. If you're working on a flat table, like we are in this room, um, the importance of a, a frog tongue is a bit lower um, because you can, say if I was laminating this bit of fiberglass here, I would have this bag oversized like you see, all the consumable stack, and then I would have the breech valve which goes to the vacuum bag stuck up in the corner a long way away from my resin, and I would have a um, bit of breather felt going to the job where the resin was. When we're working on the job, um, what I'll do is I'll bag up around my uh, laminate that I'm doing and then actually have my frog tongue go into my bag here and have this extra tongue away from the job. So if any bleed off comes, I've got a little bit of a safety barrier here uh, before the resin can get to my breech valve. So I get the, um, the laminate done, uh, joining the front beam to the hull. And then once I've done that, uh, I'll show more in detail, applying the, the stack of the peel ply, the perforated plastic and the breather felt. Then uh, putting the bag on and the techniques of putting pleats in the bag, which is really important because we have some complex geometry here where the um, you can see the shape of the beam is anything but square and straight. So we have a flat piece here, a flat piece sort of here, and it's curved here, and it joins in the middle here. It's got to go around the corner here, and then it's got to go around the edge over here. So the bag has to be able to conform to all of these shapes and push the carbon in uh, firmly against the hull. So uh, there's a few, a lot of tricks um, there, and the big making the bag oversized or probably make a lot more sense once that's happened. Right, so I've got the um, peel ply on and first layer of peel ply or first piece of peel ply went across the seam here because the peel ply doesn't sleaze and bend and move around like the, um, the carbon. It needs to be uh, joined in a lot of places and because the fibers don't need to be continuous, they can overlap as much as they like. Um, I put a lot of joins and splits, particularly in corners and crevices and geometry change, changes like in the corner here. Um, so there's one piece on the flat here, one piece on the flat here, and then little wedge pieces in the corner here. And you can see I've got little nicks in it and tucks in it there, so that it'll overlap and release and relieve in the corners so that when we pull the bag, the peel ply isn't going to stop the bag from pushing the carbon down hard against the hull. So I'm now putting on the perf plastic and the breather felt. And I'm putting it on in multiple pieces with joins, particularly in the corners, so that we don't um, get any bridging in the corners, which holds the bag up off the laminate and won't let the vacuum bag press down and consolidate the carbon to the hull. So I put multiple uh, different pieces on. <clears throat> With overlaps, small overlaps, not big overlaps. Sometimes even just butt, or most of the time just butt jointing if I can. And the, uh, the reason it's staying in place is 
because the resin's quite sticky, so it'll hold it in place, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it's not quite sticky enough or you're working overhead and you'll actually need to um, use a bit of spray tack glue to help hold it up there. So you can um, mix some with this because the vacuum will eventually get there in the end. That's what it's all about is making sure that there's an even vacuum over the whole job. If we ended up with a resin seal across here, my frog's mouth is here, it'll seal and there's a tiniest air leak here. The vacuum pump can't get the air from this side to the vacuum pump because it'll be sealed off by resin. So the breather felt allows passage of air if there's any air leaks anywhere to get from wherever it is in the bag uh, through and flowing into the vacuum pump. This is why we don't actually like the breather felt to completely fill with uh, resin and bleed out so much that it fills the hole of the breather felt up. So I had a little bit of resin run down here and this is where I want the vacuum bag to seal. And because the, the resin is oily, uh, the tacky tape won't seal. So I've just removed the piece of tape with the uh, resin on it. Replace it with a new bit. Okay, Blamo. And now my vacuum bag has a fresh new surface to um, stick to. Now I'll get the frog's mouth and position it. The sun's just come out and made everything warm, so I'm in a little bit more of a rush. If my resin is now going to start going off a lot faster. Put the frog's mouth right on my nice new fresh piece of tape. Alright, uh, secrets of bag. Lots of pleats and set out the corners first. So I'm going to pin the corner over here first. Pin the corner over here second. Corner over the other side. Last corner. Okay, the next of all, find the middle of your Stretch from corner to corner. And pin it approximately in the middle. Same with this leg. Now this one, it's like this bag is probably marginal on length. So I'm gonna start in the middle here and work my way out. Small pleat in the bag in the middle. Enough material to work with. Yeah. Right, got resin on these two bits of tape as well. Right. Nice and fresh surfaces. Uh, 
situation you don't really want to be in, where your bag's a bit tight. And you want to try and make sure that you don't get any of the fibres from your peel ply and everything under the tacky tape like I've just done here, because that will create an air leak. Right, where I have got enough uh, vacuum bag here, I can start putting my proper pleat arrangement in. So, pleat here. Now these pleats basically create excess bag to go around the um, geometry and corners of the job. I keep it all on the tape. Roughly get the bag set out where you need it to be. Pleat in the middle because there's a geometry change there. It's always good practice to put pleats in the near the corners. If you've got enough bag, not like what I've done here. So a small pleat in the corner there. There's a lot of geometry changing around on the back here that I've got to put a lot of pleats in succession for where it goes over the sail track around the back corner of the, the beam. Because it's a big flat span on the underside, the number of pleats is not as important. Where the geometry changes are, it's very important. Yeah, the vacuum bag is roughly in position. So I'm about to turn the vacuum pump on. I've got to be quick because this is going to evacuate my bag fairly rapidly. Right, still got lots of big holes in it. This is nice and slow. I'm going to start manipulating my bag sit where I want it to sit. Making sure that in these corners here. Now I've created a small pleat in the bag where the corner is so when it starts pulling tight It'll expand and slide its weight into the corner. Now that the bag's roughly where it needs to be, go around, squishing all the tacky tape in, making sure it's all sealed because I've got lots of little tiny air leaks, little tiny holes between the hull and the tacky tape because I've got no vacuum and I can hear the air running through the, the frog's mouth. There it is, it's my biggest one. There we go. Now it's starting to get a, now I've got quite a good back here. Now you can start to see the bleed coming through. Let's have a look close in here. You can see the resin starting to bleed through all those little perforated holes. I need to keep working around, making sure that my bag is well and truly pressed and you'll be able to hear all the leaks now in the in the bag. I'll go around now. Pressing down on the leaks. There you go. 
and as that happens, the atmospheric pressure starts pushing down heavy on the bag, starts squeezing the carbon hard against the hull, and any excess resin gets squeezed out through the holes and then ends up in the breather felt. So, making sure that I come back to check that the bag isn't bridging a corner. So we've got a corner like this. We want to make sure that the bag is not bridging the corner. We want to make sure that the, the bag is going right into the corner so that it presses, presses hard up against the carbon to push it hard against the hull. Bridges like this, the carbon won't be consolidated down inside the corner. Right, now that I'm happy that I've got a good back on there, it's all secure, things aren't going to fall out and fall off and come apart, etc, etc. I don't want the resin to be too liquid for too long. Because the longer this resin is, un is liquefied now, the higher the risk of something bad happening. Power going out and the vacuum pump going off. Getting a hole in the bag or the tacky tape, particularly this bag, because I made it a little bit tight around here, could get warm and peel off. So we want to get the resin to go off as fast as we possibly can now. Uh, so I'll set up a little temporary bathroom heater and tent arrangement to pump heat into it to get it to cook, uh, kick off nice and fast now.